Hmm. I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right then. So, you know what happened then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. I have neither the experience nor the interest in navigating the finer sex and their peculiarities. Do what you will. Oh, right. Yes, of course. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of The Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh no, uh, my apologies, Mr Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and, and, uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper.
Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Let me know if there's any way I can make it up to you. Tell you what, tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. Okay, okay, not just tomorrow. A whole week's worth. How does that sound? You're right, I could do more. Next time you move house, I'll be there to help. I'm great with boxes. And feel free to consult my books whenever you like. I could be an asset in one of your investigations. And feel free to consult my books whenever you like. I could be an asset in one of your investigations. I'm sure Barnes has had enough of our meddling, Mr. Holmes. We best be off. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come.